Well, to hear the students in her class talk, one might think that our Miss Brooks was the only female English teacher at Madison High School, but this isn't so. No, there are several English teachers at Madison, of whom five are ladies. Then there's Miss Enright. For almost six years now, we've been waging what might be termed romantic warfare. Objective, biology teacher Philip Boynton. Knowing Mr. Boynton's passion for food, I scored a strategic victory early last week when I invited Mr. Boynton to dinner on Thursday night. He accepted, so bright and early Thursday morning, I called the butcher and ordered a pot roast. And that is Mr. Boynton's favorite dish. And that includes me and Miss Enright. <laughs> well, after dressing, I hastened into the breakfast room and greeted my landlady. Good morning, Mrs. Davis. I'm all ready to break bread with you. You won't have to, Connie. It comes sliced. <laughs> <laughs> now sit down and drink your juice, dear. What kind of juice is this, Mrs. Davis? It's artichoke juice. <laughs> artichoke juice? Yes. I bought it in the new health food department in the market this morning. I also ordered some delicious steaks from them. What kind of steaks? They're perfect replicas of New York cuts. Replicas? Actually, they're made out of soy beans and watercress. <laughs> but you can never tell the difference. Believe me, I could tell the difference. <laughs> oh, Connie, there's something I must tell you. When I was in the market this morning, I met Miss Enright. Oh? What did the delightful Daisy have to relate? Well, she told me she was ordering just for herself. She was planning a lonely dinner for one. That's when she told me how fortunate I am. And she paid you a lovely compliment. A compliment? Yes. She said, Mrs. Davis, you don't know how lucky you are to have someone to dine with every night, even if it's only Miss Brooks. <laughs> what a doll. I felt so sorry for the poor thing. I invited her over here for dinner tonight. What? But Mrs. Davis, she probably knew I'd invited Mr. Boynton over here tonight. Don't you see, she deliberately wangled this invitation out of you. But Connie, she didn't seem to be wangling. Well, that's the beauty of experience. When a wangler like Miss Enright wangles you, you don't suspect any wangling until you've been wangled. <laughs> but Connie, I talked her into canceling her own order at the market, invited her here. You'll just have to share your pot roast with her. Well, what's done is done, I guess. But between you and me, Mrs. Davis, with the pot Daisy Enright's got, she doesn't need my roast. <laughs> I don't like to appear overly nervous, Walter, but do you think you could restrain the speed of this demon jalopy just a little? If for you, I'll put it in reverse, Miss Brooks. Oh, please don't. We're terrifying enough going forward. Miss <laughs> Brooks, inasmuch as my regard for you transcends the mere respect of pupil for teacher, I would like to take the liberty of remarking that I detect in your manner this morning a vague discontent. A discontent based on some occurrence in the immediate past or discernible future. Now, we all know that women are funny. They're a scream. Of course, some are funnier than others. Yeah. And by funny, we don't always mean comical, do we? Uh, particularly when we speak of one Daisy Enright. Where have you been this morning? To a seance? <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. No, to the market. There, I helped my mother with some shopping. And there we ran into Miss Enright, who told my mother she was dining at your place tonight. Now, knowing the overwhelming absence of affection you two feel for each other, I figured out that you must have a date with Mr. Boynton, and that she wangled an invitation from Mrs. Davis, who was also in the market. QED, you are discontented. Walter, have you ever considered a career in espionage? <laughs> well, it was a simple deduction, Miss Brooks. Now, let us follow this dilemma to a more satisfactory conclusion. And knowing that you wish to be alone with Mr. Boynton tonight, uh, may I suggest that you, uh, that you invite me to dinner, too? Invite you to dinner, too? You, why, you ask? Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> because when you want to take a stroll in the garden with Mr. Boynton, or turn on the radio and dance with Mr. Boynton, I can keep Miss Enright completely embroiled in a maze of fascinating, albeit meaningless, conversation. Well, You I... might not believe this, Miss Brooks, 
but I have it in my power to keep up an almost constant flow of gibberish, calculated to send the most bovine of listeners into a state of panic, wherein fleeing the premises is only one of the lesser manifestations of shock. Am I invited? Be there at seven, tie optional. <laughs> Thanks for the hitch, Walter. If you'll excuse me now, I've got to make a stop before I go into my own class. Yes, ma'am, the biology lab is just three doors down. Thank you, Rand McNally. Hello, Miss Brooks. Good morning, Walter. Oh, hi, Harriet, dear. Hey, guess what happened? Miss Brooks has invited me to join Miss Enright and Mr. Boynton and herself for dinner tonight. But, Walter, what about our date for tonight? Date? Oh, oh dear, I, I forgot about that. I looked into my wallet this morning and our date completely slipped my mind. Oh, golly, Walter, you don't have to spend any money on me. Besides, we could still be together if a certain party were kind enough to invite me to dinner also. Ooh. Oh, of course, we'd love to have you, Harriet. Oh, gee, thanks, Miss Brooks. I was walking along, minding my business. Hmm? <laughs> Well, you're welcome, Harriet. May I ask the nature of the convention outside my office? Miss Brooks just invited me to dinner, Daddy. I see. Well, send her in immediately, please. Yes, Daddy. Won't you go into Daddy's office, please, Miss Brooks? All right, Harriet. I'll see you later, everybody. Uh, you wanted to see me, Miss Conklin? I've been holding my breath. Miss Brooks, across the hall and three doors to the right is a door. This door leads into a room. What is this room, Miss Brooks? That's the biology laboratory, sir. Uh, that's what I thought. As you should know by now, within the confines of this institution, I do not approve of fraternization between faculty members of the opposite sex. Now then, it's quite simple. Mr. Boynton is a man. You are a woman. Sir, you didn't tell Mr. Boynton. <laughs> no, I thought I'd better wait until he's a bit older. <laughs> Oh, good. A thing like that can make quite an impression. I oh, think. quiet! <laughs> well, I know how you stand on this question, Mr. Conklin, but if you'll forgive me, sir, I don't think it's fair. After all, you yourself are a married man. You don't know the meaning of loneliness. Uh, that's beside the point, and also not quite factual. My wife spends a good deal of her time with ladies' clubs and bridge. In fact, just today she informed me that she's going to dinner with some local group or other, that I shall be, as she so winsomely puts it, on my own. Well, I'm sorry about that, sir, Once but I again, don't... my little daughter shall be dependent upon her daddy to look after her. And her daddy shall look after her, Miss Brooks. I'm planning on having dinner with Harriet. But, Mr. Conklin, Harriet's been invited to dinner at my house. I know. What are we having for dinner, Miss Brooks? <laughs> huh? I said, what are we having? Just the biggest crowd you ever saw, Daddy. <laughs> At noon, I entered the school cafeteria, and as luck would have it, I spied Mr. Boynton just sitting down at the table across the room. Having nothing better to do, I sauntered over. Hi, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Mind if I sit down? Oh, not at all, Miss Brooks. Oh, there's something I have to tell you. Oh, yes? Well, due to a misunderstanding on Mrs. Davis's part, we won't be dining alone. We won't? No, she invited someone else this morning, and this, in turn, set off a rather disturbing chain reaction. As it winds up, I'm having quite a dinner party. Oh, well, I hope you don't misunderstand, Miss Brooks, but I'm genuinely disappointed. In fact, I'm chagrined. Honestly, Mr. Boynton? Yes, indeed. It's quite a blow to learn that others are going to be present tonight. I'd rather hope that we'd be alone, Miss Brooks. Just you and me. Just you and me? Yeah, that's right. If it were just the two of us, we could split the pot roast. <laughs> you romantic fool, you. I can't wait until the night we whack up a salami in Capri. <laughs> but, Mr. Boynton... Well, salami doesn't agree with me very well. Oh, forget it, Mr. Boynton. It was just a long, thin figure of speech. <laughs> I thought I'd tell you who was invited. There'll be Walter Denton and Harriet Conklin and, of course, Mr. Conklin. Why Mr. Conklin? 
because his wife's going to a hen party and left Harriet in his care, and I invited Harriet. Yeah, but who invited Mr. Conklin? Mr. Conklin. <laughs> but, Mr. Boynton, there's one more person I haven't mentioned yet. Miss Enright will be present, too. Miss Enright? Well, say, that won't be so bad. It won't, huh? No, I don't think she goes much for pot roast. <laughs> well, it could be worse, I suppose. I might be serving lamb chops, and with those little pants on them, I know she'd go for those. <laughs> you know, what really annoys me about the entire affair is the way Miss Enright wangled her invitation out of Mrs. Davis. Well, what did she do? Right in Hersh's meat market, she did everything but the death scene from Camille. <laughs> well, I can't say that I see anything wrong in a woman employing a bit of innocent deception to attain her end. I wish I could attain her end. <laughs> well, actually, it shows that... <laughs> actually, it shows that she has ingenuity. She's using her gray matter. Now, these actions clearly indicate that Miss Enright's a thinker. Closer you'll never come. <laughs> but let's forget about Miss Enright. Well, that may not be so easy. She's heading this way with her lunch tray. Oh, maybe if we're real quiet, she'll go on by. Boy, mind if I join you? Oh, certainly not, Miss Enright. Oh, let me pull up a chair for you. Oh, don't bother. I'll just shove the old laundry bag off this chair. And, oh, it's you, Miss Brooks. <laughs> oh, how are you today, you dear, dear person? Divine, darling. <laughs> you don't mind if I sit down, do you? Oh, not at all. Pull up a wide chair and squat. If uh, you ladies will excuse me for a moment, I'm going to get myself a cup of coffee. I see you've got yours, Miss Enright. How about you, Miss Brooks? Would you like a cup? Oh, thanks, Mr. Boynton. I'd love one. Fine. I said I'd like some coffee, Mr. Boynton. Yes, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. <laughs> Thanks. I'll be back in a jiffy. <laughs> oh, what a lovely relationship exists between you and Mr. Boynton, my dear. I bet it makes you glow all over to bask in the warmth of his frugality. <laughs> well, let's not quibble. <laughs> we're to be dinner companions this evening, hmm? Well, we're eating under the same roof, if that's what you mean. Oh, don't be bitter, darling. By the way, I'm happy to see you're keeping yourself in good physical condition. I clocked you in four seconds flat in your sprint across the cafeteria just now. Was that handily or breezing? <laughs> you don't mind my saying so, your workout had repercussions, darling. You're about to lose a heel. Oh, are you leaving so soon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean on my shoe? Yes, the left one. It's slitting, see? Right below that spot where your stockings slop over the top. <laughs> Well, thanks, Miss Enright, and if I may return the favor, you seem to have a rather wide run in your stocking, the right one. Me? Oh, you're not wearing stockings. <laughs> uh, sorry. Look, Miss Enright, we may not be overly fond of each other, but we're adult human beings. This verbal hair-pulling is rather childish. Oh, <laughs> here you are, Miss Brooks. Oh, thank you, Mr. Boynton. Well, Miss Enright, are you all ready for our little dinner party at Miss Brooks' place tonight? Mr. Boynton, I'm looking forward to it with bated breath. Is that cut bait or live bait? <laughs> It'll be nice to have a home-cooked meal for a change. Last night, I dined at the Zenith Drugstore. The Zenith? That's where you took me last Saturday, isn't it? Yes, but I don't think I'm going to patronize them anymore. They charge 70 cents for roast beef. 70 cents? Well, that's funny. I had roast beef when we were there, and it only cost me 60 cents. Well, that night, the part of Madison High who had invited themselves to dinner arrived at Miss Brooks' house. Well, here we are, folks. You certainly made good time, Walter. Yeah, how'd you like the trip, Mr. Conklin? I've never been on one like it, Denton. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. I hope never to go on another. <laughs> Come on, I see Miss Brooks is waiting at her front door for her. Hi, Miss Brooks. It's nice of you to meet us at the door like this. Huh? 
Oh, hello, folks. I'm, I'm not really meeting you. I'm just looking for my key. I'm a little late getting home. Oh, that's okay, Miss Brooks. Well, I trust this won't delay our dinner. I'm hungry enough to eat a bear. I hope you're not disappointed, Mr. Conklin. They were all out of bear meat at the market. <laughs> but Mrs. Davis told me on the phone that she'd have the pot roast ready by 6.30 sharp. Let's see, now, here's my key. Oh, there we are. Now, just hang your hats and coats on this hall tree, will you? I'll take care of them, Miss Brooks. Yes, you'd better get back to the kitchen and add your magic touch to the forthcoming repast. It's 6.15. When are the others coming? Oh, well, Mr. Boynton said he'd be here at 6.15 sharp. And Mr. Boynton's very prompt as a rule. Oh, yes, indeed. You can usually set your watch by Mr. Boynton. Oh, welcome, Mr. Boynton. Come on in. Oh, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Hiya, Mr. Boynton. Did you bring your customarily outsized appetite along tonight, Boynton? My outsized appetite? Oh, now, this is going to be a gay little dinner party, everybody. Let's not snarl at each other until we smell blood. <laughs> oh, that must be Miss Enright. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> oh, come in, Miss Enright. Good evening, Miss Brooks. Hello, all. Hi, Miss Enright. Good Enright. evening, Miss Enright. Well, suppose you and Harriet set the table now, Miss Enright. I'd like to give Mrs. Davis a hand. Fine, Miss Brooks. You'll find dishes and silverware in the cabinet, Walter. Lift everything out for the girls, will you? you sure, Miss Brooks. You go right ahead. Well, let's sit down in the living room, Mr. Conklin, shall we? I suppose so. I hope these preparations don't take too long. Can I do anything to make you comfortable, Mr. Boynton? Yeah, Mr. Boynton's as comfortable as he's going to get, Miss Enright. I, I need you over here, if you don't mind, please. Yes, give us a hand with these dishes, won't you? Oh, very well. See, Mr. Boynton, what a domestic little mouse I am. You take this cheese dish, Miss Enright. <laughs> Well, make it snappy, everybody. It's almost 6.30. Oh, excuse me, folks, but I'm afraid I have a rather depressing bulletin. What's wrong, Miss Brooks? The pot roast hasn't even been started yet. It'll take hours to cook. What manner of grim jest is this? Where's Mrs. Davis? She's gone, Mr. Conklin, but she left me this note. I'll read it to you. It says, Dear Connie, as you know, my sister Angela's niece, Wilma, has been expecting a baby. Well, it just arrived, and since you are the godmother and Wilma's husband is on the road, I think she would feel better if you joined us at the hospital immediately. Yours in haste, Mrs. Davis. What colossal nerve, having a baby at a time like this. <laughs> well, it can't be helped, I suppose. But what are you going to do, Miss Brooks? What can I do but join them as soon as I phone the hospital? Would you drive me over, Mr. Boynton? Oh, I guess I'll have to. But I must admit, I'm terribly disappointed, Miss Brooks. Well, this is a fine dinner party. Oh, I don't know. All's well that ends well. <laughs> I mean, come on, Mr. Conklin. I'll drive you and Harriet home. You won't get me in that jazzed-up hearse again. <laughs> Miss Enright, your car has four wheels. You will take us home. But, Mr. Conklin, maybe I should stay with you. That's Mr. an order, Miss Enright. <laughs> yes, sir. Come, Harriet. All right, Daddy. <laughs> Follow us home, Walter. I'll cook us dinner. Good night, Miss Brooks. Good night, Harriet. Uh, good night, Miss Brooks. Mr. Good Martin. night. Better luck next time, darling. Well, I'm ready, Miss Brooks. As soon as you call the hospital, we can go... Hmm. What's the reason for that meditative look in your eye? I remember this afternoon at lunch, you said you couldn't see anything wrong in a woman employing a bit of deception to gain her end? Yes. Well, what has that got to do Excuse with... Excuse it... me a moment, Mr. Boynton. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mrs. Davis! Yes, Connie, what is it? Wheel out the pot roast and call me Matahari. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, was produced and directed by Larry Burns, written by Arthur Alsberg and Al Lewis with the music of Lud Bluskin. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. This program came to you from the Frankfurt studios of the American Forces Network Europe and was prepared for rebroadcast over this network by specialist Ed Barron.